welcome to my back porch again. Um, I enjoyed it so much the last time um, on the last homeschooling video that I did that I decided to go ahead and try to make it a regular thing. Um, so in case you get bored of what I'm saying, at least you have some trees to look at in the background. So today I'm going to be discussing the math curriculum that we use here in the Lee household. And I can tell you right now, not a lot of people use it. At least I haven't found a lot of videos on this particular curriculum, but it is so worth it. If you are looking for something different and you want um, something much more easy and in real life um, applicable, this curriculum is only 12 to $14 for two years, two years of math. Yeah. So I have um, four years worth of math sitting here next to me um, because I have, I got Dean's math when he was in second grade. So we have a second and third grade and then we also have the fourth, fifth grade math books to show you today. I'm so excited. Um, sorry about the plane. You also might hear a rooster or a chicken in the background. It depends on how talkative they are today. So anyways, I digress, my apologies. Um, what I'm going to do, the best way to do this is I don't want to, uh, I'm gonna tell you about our experiences and whatnot with this curriculum, but what I don't wanna do is miss out on some of the, the fundamental um, like teachings that this book does cover because I, like I said, I haven't gone all the way through the whole book yet and I don't wanna miss out on something if there's something in particular that you're looking for and that I just happen to not know as of yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to read the first couple pages um, and I'll paraphrase some of them as I go through just so that way you have an opportunity to hear everything that this book has to offer and decide if it's something that would work for you in your home. And then um, I'll elaborate more on, on that and show you uh, my kids' gridded math notebooks and whatnot. So that way you can see that it is a pretty cool math book. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do first is, um, what do they say? Let's see, my, my son is rough with his books, so there's a little bit of tape on here, but um, I mean, that's just the realness of it. It is what it is. So this is the um, second and third grade, Strayer Upton Practical Arithmetic. Um, this is the first book that they have. So they don't have anything before second grade. Um, my recommendation, if you were to do that, I've seen that The Good and the Beautiful has come out with a new uh, Math K level and that a lot of people are raving about, so I would check that out. They've consolidated, it used to be two books and now it's gone, gone down to one. Um, and they also um, give you your manipulatives with it anyways, and I believe it's only like $50 for the whole year, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, I can't help it, I just wanna tell you all the things that I know. So this is the second and third grade math book. As you can see, here's my hand. Uh, it's not large. It's um, a very compact sized book. It's really easy to store anywhere and um, it's got like a, a cloth cover on it um, and each level is going to be a different color and you'll see when I show you my, my daughter's um, booklet as well. So the, f the first um, thing that I wanted to tell you is um, I'll read a little bit of the preface for you just so that way you know um, what you might be getting into. So this series of books aims to give the child the ability to compute easily and accurately and to enable him to interpret and solve the quantitative situations which he will meet in everyday life. And that is so true in here in their math problems and I'll show you they have um, little like uh, photos of like a storefront with um, the prices of the items and then the, the student It'll say like, you know, how much is a can of beans? Or um, Brie wanted to go to the store and buy a can of beans and it'll list out a bunch of things and then they have to find how much it's listed for and then like add it up, so it's pretty cool. Um, it says, in this book, the following features are worthy of note. This book is written for children in language with which they are familiar. The greatest care has been taken into the selection of the vocabulary. The problems relate to the life and interests of the pupils. They are real problems in every sense of the word. And that is very true. 
Uh, motivation is the keynote of successful work in arithmetic. When a new topic is being presented, the pupils should know why the topic is important and how it is used in life. This fundamental principle of teaching is applied throughout the series of books by presenting every new operation or detail of a process in connection with an interesting, motivating problem that treats of some situation with which the child is familiar. The explanations of new principles and processes have been made as simple and as clear as possible. I agree with that 100%. All the abstract exercises have been scientifically constructed so as to provide drill on all fundamental number combinations with ample repetition of these recognized as most difficult. The total number of abstract exercises in this book is far greater than that usually found in elementary school texts. Another thing that I've noticed, um, my kids, there are, um, when they're studying a specific concept, they have, um, like a whole page with like anywhere from 30 to 50 problems devoted to that one topic. Um, and for example, like division, my daughter is doing long division with double digits. So like 24 into 8,529, for example, and there will be 30 to 50 of those problems on one page. And we won't do all of those in one day, but we usually do like right now during the summer, I'm having them just do five problems a day just to kind of keep it fresh. Um, during the school during the school year, um, it's a little bit different. But if I find that she's just like hitting the nail on the head every single time that she's doing these five problems, getting 100% um, on the on the answers, and she's able to articulate the process to me, then we just we won't finish the rest of the 50, and we'll just move on to the next subject because um, she already knows what she's doing. So the checking of computations is one of the most important habits that a child can learn. Throughout this book, checking is taught early in the presentation of each new operation and is required in all exercises. So in order for her to make sure that she um, got the correct answer, especially if there's like a remainder on it, she will go back through and she'll take her answer and she will work it backwards. Um, and she'll show me that she knows how to check her work to ensure that she got the correct answer. Long division is presented in this text in an unusually simple and clear manner. In learning long division, the pupil has become acquainted with many new steps, the most difficult of which is the finding of the correct quotient figures. In this book, the several steps in long division are presented one at a time. This is true. They will, they'll focus on um, like the first step of doing long division with only even numbers. So that way there's no remainders and they're just single digits. Um, and it's a lot easier for the student to grasp that concept and, and feel comfortable with mo moving forward. Um, my children went from being really frustrated or just feeling really discouraged about math. Um, I would say not so much my son. He's definitely much more of a left brain child. But my daughter, she really hated math when she was in public school. And um, we did do math lessons for a living education. Um, when we first switched to homeschool. And it was great. Um, I did find a few, a couple of errors in the books. Um, and I feel like a little bit of it for my kids, my kids, uh, y'all's may be different, but it was just a little bit too busy. Um, so we ended up, when we switched over to this one, it was nice because we were able to really just slow down and um, you know, focus on the problems and how to break it down. And um, now she really enjoys it. She doesn't have any issues with it. And she feels a lot more comfortable with asking me questions when she doesn't understand the process. This book provides more fully and generously for diagnostic and remedial work than any other text in arithmetic. Frequent diagnostic tests are given throughout the book with keyed references to remedial work. This is true and I'll show you where it is in here in the book. So in the book, um, a diagnostics test would come up um, just before you're about to move on to a new concept. And it will say um, in there how much time for you to give your, your child um, during this diagnostics test and that they should be able to get so many done and correct within this time period if they um, are unable to do so, then just to continue working on um, that section for a little while longer until they can uh, move ahead, you know, and 
um, pass the diagnostics test. Another feature of this book is its carefully planned instruction in problem solving and developing the ability to solve one-step problems. The pupil is taught the more important language expressions of arithmetic that often suggest the operation that is to be performed. In teaching two-step problems, emphasis is placed upon those types of two-step problems that occur most frequently in everyday life. Throughout the book, there are very few pages upon which all the problems require the same operation. There are, however, many pages containing problems of several kinds where the pupil must decide whether to add, subtract, multiply, or divide to get the answer. Thus, the pupil's ability in problem solving is developed as systemically as his skill in computation. So when um, they're working on a problem, they'll see something like, for example, written out uh, one numerically $1 plus $2 then the same problem might be presented a little bit later but it'll be spelled out one dollar plus two dollars and then the third way that they'll do it is by listing it um, in a story formation so you know sarah has one dollar and her brother todd has two dollars how many dollars do they have together so everything is presented in as many formats as possible so that way the child becomes familiar with being able to solve problems on a wider scale than just um, looking at the numbers. A series of tests on problem solving is also provided throughout the book. These tests cover types of problem situations with which every pupil should be familiar. An important feature of these tests is that they not only measure the pupil's mastery of types of thinking frequently employed in problem solving, and I, that is true, I absolutely love that, um, mastering the types of think, thinking frequently employed in problem solving. So they're already um, becoming professional problem solvers. Um, and I can say that this math book has definitely helped out with my kids just being um, forward thinkers and problem solvers in everyday life on, on many different levels as well. So they have, it says these tests are arranged in groups known as groups A, B, and C. So each group consists of three tests. Thus, group A consists of test A1, A2, A3. The problems on test A1 will cover the same variety and types of problem situations and the same range of difficulty as those found on test A2 and A3. A pupil, therefore, should do better on the second and third tests of any group than on the first test. Thus, the pupil has the satisfaction of seeing himself grow in problem solving ability. The problems on the test of groups B and C cover in similar manner other sets of types of problems. Full provision has been made for pupils of varying levels of, of ability. For those of superior ability, more difficult exercises marked with a star. So there's a little star that looks like that are provided. For pupils of average and below average ability, additional exercises may be prescribed if needed. So if you're working on a problem and there's a star like that next to it, um, it's going to be a bit more of a difficult exercise. So you can see um, if, you know, how your child is doing, how do they, um, how do they range on the scale. So, yay, there's that. <laughs> the preface is done. Um, what I'm going to do is just kind of show you the chapters in here. I'll just read them off um, on what uh, will be taught in the second and third grade book. And then I'll flip through and kind of show you um, the, the actual working material itself. So chapter one is going to be addition and subtraction, um, numbers to 100, United States money, and then addition and subtraction again. So they'll start off, for example, on page one, Let me turn to the side a little bit, um, and it, there's a little game that is presented right here, and everything's written out, and there's an example up here at the top, and it says playing 10 pins. So these children are playing 10 pins. Grace rolls a ball and knocks down five pins, and she rolls another ball and knocks down three. Her score is five and three. Frank says that this makes eight, is he right? So it'll show it written off down here, off to the side. And then the problems are given down here at the bottom for the child to solve. Now, if your child needs manipulatives, that's totally fine. And you don't have to spend, 
you know, a ton of money on a manipulatives kit, even though it's very tempting, especially just don't go on Etsy. Oh my goodness. Don't go on Etsy because they have the most beautiful manipulative kits. I just had to uninstall that app from my phone because, um, yeah, I was really tempted. So don't do that. Um, use, you can use beads, you can use erasers, like fun erasers. You can use marbles, um, you can use goldfish, and then at the end of doing all of your math problems, um, your child can eat all the goldfish. So there's lots of different things that you can go ahead and use for manipulatives without spending, um, you know, extra money or a ton of money, or use all the shoes in your house, or use t-shirts and throw everything out on the floor. So it can be a lot of fun. Um, it doesn't have to be super structured in the way that a, you know, a public school would do it. And then, uh, how far can you count? So John is counting the pennies in his bank. He says he has 24 pennies. Can you count to 24? Try it. So in here, um, as you can see, there's just like lots of really cool um, photos. I prefer the old style of writing and just the simplicity in the of the, the pictures and how they actually look like real children. So everything's written out in here um, and it's very easy for your child to understand. I've had zero issues with um, my son and there's these games we've actually taken buckets and done we've um, replicated this beanbag uh, game that they have in here and he had a lot of fun with it uh so let's see here then chapter two once you move on past that you get into reading and writing numbers addition subtraction multiplication and division measuring length short division measuring liquids multiplication and division again so it, it Remember how when I, in the beginning, it said like they, they add on to them. So you have multiplication and division on page 86, and then it's revisited again, starting on page 128. Um, more than likely they will sprinkle it through the book on here in the in-between. Let me see if I can find. Yeah. So it starts on 86. It doesn't just stay there. Um, so multiplying twos multiplying by twos. So everything's written out on here for the child to look through and write through. Really, really easy um, for them to understand. And then chapter three is reading and writing numbers again. So it starts off the same. Um, it'll probably be, it'll end up being just like bigger forms of numbers. Addition and subtraction, multiplication and division telling time, multiplication and division again, then the calendar, multiplication and division, then measures, and then multiplication and division. So in chapter three, you can see that's where they're really starting to um, expand on the diversity of multiplication and division. I was really nervous to get started with math uh, with my kids because, um, I mean, I'm good at math. I feel like I'm pretty, I do well with like my personal finances, but then again, then I thought, you know, we're just in elementary school, um, maybe in middle school, if we have to, you know, if they end up getting into a level of math where I'm no longer able to do that for them, you know, then I'll make sure to find um, a different program to put them on. But right now, this has just been a lot of fun. So don't stress out and don't be worried. If you're worried, um, don't do that to yourself because it's not, it's not helpful. And I can promise you, you're putting the cart before the horse, you're gonna do just fine. So chapter four is addition, subtraction, uh, solving two-step problems. So let's see what that looks like on page 289. And the reason why I like to go into depth on these videos is because I'm a very inquisitive person in general. And so I'm just gonna show you the things that I would normally be like, well, let me, what is that? What, is, what does how to solve a two-step problem look like in this book? Let me show you, we're gonna look together. So how to solve a two-step problem. Um, so in here, it just, oh, okay, so first step, you need to know how many pieces of candy Mary made all together. So there's a little story um, before it. To find this number, you add 28 and 35, which gives 63. Mary made 63 pieces of candy. So work these two-step problems. So there's more, um, it just basically goes through and shows how to do a two-step problem. So it's just, I think, a little reminder um, that not everything's going to be easy right off the bat. Um, or not that it's not going to be easy, but that it's not just going to be a simple one-step problem. Um, and then there's how to make change. So they have a picture of 
nickel, dime, quarter, and a half dollar in here. Turn this around. Let's see what you can see in here. And what I would do is I would actually just get um, some change and kind of replicate it right in front of them in real life so they can hold it, they can see what it looks like, um, and then just maybe like put them over the tops right here. If you have, if you can get, get hold of a half dollar, that'd be really cool. But if not, um, just explain to them, you know, we don't, those aren't very common anymore. So we don't really use those as often as they were back then because I mean, you could get into price inflation and stuff like that, but you can just tell them that we don't really use it anymore. <laughs> so, um, there's money there. And then, uh, it looks like after two set problems, it goes making change, reading and writing numbers, multiplication, short division, finding averages, more difficult multiplication. Okay. Measure of time, multiplication and division. And then the last chapter is chapter five. So reading and writing numbers, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, long division, measure, long division again, problem solving, three figure divisors, fractions, measuring length, measuring area, drawing to scale, and then you have review and index. Um, one thing I wanted to show you on here, let me see if I can find a page that has um, an example. For any of these, I know it'll be in my daughter's. Oh, here we go. So this is, again, Dean's math book. So on the sides of these math books, if you look over here, it says help pages. So if the student is becoming stuck on this or they forget a step, they have the help pages listed right here off to the side. So that way they can problem solve <laughs> themselves and try to see if they can figure it out. Now, I do not ignore my son when he tells me that he needs help, but if I do notice that he's not trying to, um, you know, resolve it or look for the solution on his own when he has everything in front of him that he, um, you know, that he needs to, to figure it out, then I'll just kindly show him, look, there's some help pages here. Have you looked at those? Did you read it? Did you just, did you double check and see? Um, and if he did, then we'll move forward and we'll do it together. And if he didn't, then I just wanna give him a chance to go through and look at it. Sometimes I'll set a timer for just a few minutes and, and make sure that he's given himself enough time to actually read through it. Um, but like I said, he hasn't um, had any, we haven't had any issues with this so far. Another great thing is that all the answers are provided to you in the back of the book. So everything's, like I said before, there they are. All you gotta do is turn to back here and it'll say like page 27, number three, 12 cents. So it's all provided. Every single answer is within the same book. And then you have your index in the back that will show you like remainders and division. And so you can turn to those pages um, if you're having trouble figuring out um, like, hmm, where did we see that? Or you can even just show your child that they can refer to the index. Um, and then they have tests sprinkled out, so promotion tests throughout this, um, and drill exercises, mixed practices. So addition will be mixed in with subtraction or division, and um, you know, lots of different stuff. So this book for us has been really awesome. Again, because it's to us, it's so straightforward. Um, I feel like for me personally, a lot of um, you know, elementary arithmetic has become just over the top too much. It doesn't need to be all, all that extra. It, we really, they just need to know how to read, how to read it, how to solve it, how to apply it, and to know all the different forms that it comes in. So that was the second and third. Um, we have our fourth and fifth right here. So it's in like a, a tan booklet. Um, and again, it's a three book series, so it goes up to seventh grade. Um, and here, it basically kind of starts off on addition just to kind of do like a little refresher for from getting out of um, the last book. And then it goes straight into division um, in the book. And the things that they're going to be covering in here is cash on accounts. So my daughter was able to 
uh, make her own cash on accounts on how to add up um, stuff that she's purchased and then her expenses. And she knows how to basically like, uh, what's it called, balancing a checkbook. So it shows them that. Um, addition and subtraction, then there's improvement tests, multiplication, division, reading and writing numbers, fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions, dividing fractions, comparing numbers, bills, measures, areas, scale, drawing, volumes, reading and writing decimals, adding and subtracting decimals, multiplying decimals, graphs, dividing decimals, and then reviews. Um, and then she'll have an improvement test. So the review of the whole numbers, problem solving fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, um, dividing decimals, uh, applications of percentage, graphs, measures, review, tables for reference. Um, and then there's also suggestions to teachers as well. One thing I wanted to say is it doesn't um, say how to divide up this curriculum so that way you are making sure to divide it up between two years worth. Um, we are, what I do is I just take the book, divide the pages, um, not the lessons so much, but just the pages into how the school year is going to be. So that way I know that we are completing, so like each day, okay, we're gonna do this page, you know, blank through blank. Um, however, like I said before, some of the pages You'll get to it and you might end up not having your student do so much work because for example here is um one page where there's just a ton of work to be done if this can be a little overwhelming to finish as a, a whole page so what i would probably end up doing is just having her work through um, some of these and if she is struggling then that will be a spot where we would just kind of slow down and I would take notes in my Aunt of Aunt's um, homeschool planner about, you know, we're pausing and we are going to resume our normal schedule back at a later time and just kind of, you know, assess the situation afterwards. But I think the whole point of homeschooling, at least our point here um, of switching to homeschooling is so that way I can give my children an opportunity to fully learn and understand, digest, you know, and be able to spit it back out, all the information that they learn in every subject that we teach. So if she needs us to slow down, and if we need to back off on, and not be so structured and rigid as far as like um, how many problems we're doing per day or how much more time she needs to be spending on um, a particular subject, and then I'll do that for her. We'll go ahead and slow down and um, I'll just meet her needs where she where she's at and then we'll move forward and that's okay. That's okay. So yeah, um, we also use these graph paper uh, composition notebooks. Um, so what they'll do is they just take it and then they write out their answers or their they write everything out. So they just write out the, the question and then they problem solve everything in here. And I like the graph because it's really easy for them to keep it everything nice and neat. We were using the um, Simply Charlotte Mason graph notebook papers, but we were going through them really quickly. There wasn't a lot of pages in there, although the quality was great and the size is, the size was great. But um, when you're homeschooling, you really have to analyze like you know where your your money is going because um, it can be very it can be an addiction really quickly about just like buying all the things so these ones are from Amazon I'll look back through and I'll try to find it and link it below and I'll put the size in there as well um, we are gonna finish this out these ones out but I also ordered these from Anne Advance Paper Co they are her um, math notebooks that she offers there and I like these so much more so I don't know if if you haven't seen my other videos before this is ran by a husband and a wife a husband and wife in their home and it's uh so they they work together um if you are placing an order it does take several weeks um anywhere I think it's from six to ten weeks it could take because that you get to customize them so they're made to order 
um, but the quality, the durability, and um, just the overall usefulness of whatever it is that you order is far above any other company that I have purchased from. So this is my daughter's um, math notebook that she'll be using. And it has the, it says, I am, I can, I ought, I will in the beginning. And she's able to just flip it through. And they also sell these little magnetic uh, bookmarks right here. I think these ones came with it, but I did order a bunch more. Um, and they're front and back. And it's a really thick uh, piece of paper. They're really, really nice, really soft. So we'll end up using these moving forward just because I do like the more compact um, size of things. And it's got a cute little um, math thing on here. And yeah, so that's it. That's the Strayer Upton um, Practical Arithmetic. And I think I covered everything as far as that goes. If you have any questions about this math um, program, please leave a comment in the section below because again, um, I do my best to share. I just wanna put videos out there that are gonna be helpful to other parents who are homeschooling or just getting started in homeschooling and, and really looking to just you know shift through all the clutter and all the noise of all the things that are out there and really offer um, you an option for something that is less expensive and much more family focused and easier for um, the parents and the students and just like less stressful in general. So yeah, let me know if I didn't um, clarify anything and I um, would be more than happy to reply ASAP. Um, I'll put all of this stuff in the comments below, the comments in the description box below. And um, yeah, I mean, just check it out. And I hope that if it's something that you decide to go for, that it works for you and your family. And if you like this video, here it comes. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell so that way you are in the loop every time we release a new family living video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you all have a wonderful day or evening, depending on what time you're watching this. And we'll be seeing you soon. Bye. Thank you.